Welcome to my channel. Today I'm going to be working in ink tents and doing something in the style of Van Gogh. So I really thought that the ink tents would lend themselves to this because of the bright colours. And what I wanted to do was get some of these curls. So I'm not doing an artist's copy, I just want to do something in the style of. And one thing that I really like is all these flowing lines and all these curls and circles. It's very much how I like to work. So if we look at this, we've got lots of flowy shapes in here. And if we look at a lot of his pictures in here, he works in just small strokes of one colour. Look at the beard there, we've got these all these different coloured strokes. So he's kind of drawing with the paint, which again is a way I like to work. Um, he's not doing a lot of blending of the paint, he's not mixing his colours together too much. Um, although they do mix together as, you know, as he's putting them on and the layers obviously beneath. But he's not blending and melding them in and having all those soft edges. We've got those very distinct lines that we can still see. So I've kind of picked out these two because I like the shape of this tree, but I also like the sun here. So I thought that's two things we could have a go at. Um, and obviously you could expand this out and do something more interesting with a lot more detail if you wanted to. But I just fancied having a go at doing something like this sun with the tree next to it. So we'll do some very loose pencil guidelines to begin with, but we don't need too many. We just need something, you know, very simple to work from. So if we look at these two trees, we'll come about a third of, well, no, about a quarter of the way up the page. There's actually two here next to each other. And we'll go right to the top, up to here somewhere. And we'll look at the overall shape of the tree rather than drawing it. So we're just putting in where it will fit in. And that all these pencil lines are going to be covered over with ink tents and we really won't see them at the end. And if we do, we can just lightly erase those. So just... When you're putting your pencil on, don't go heavy handed. And I'm going to put those balls at the base as well, if you can see here. So these are obviously shrubs or bushes, and he's just done them in very simple geometric shapes. And then that line carries on, and we'll have it carrying on all the way across. Not necessarily just as he's done it, but we'll have that there. So that very simple shape going up and across, down slightly out and straight down. And this one goes this way. And it doesn't matter if it's not exactly like this. We just wanted it in the style of and getting a feel of what it does. And then the sun is basically just, sorry, I'll move that across, just the centre and then spiralling out. So we just need to decide where the centre of the sun is. And if we come about a third of the way across and a third of the way down, that makes a nice focal point for the sun. If you're not as confident as me at drawing circles, um, just get a coin or something to draw around. So this is an A4 size and I've done a margin, so it's quite a small picture that we're going to be doing here. And we don't want to slavishly copy every stroke, we just want to get a feel for it. So basically if we look at it, it's got a few different colours in there, some lighter, some darker, mostly dark greens, nearly verging on black with this line here. So what I'm going to do with is just work with one colour at a time. I'm not going to talk through the whole thing because it's pretty self-explanatory, but getting those curves with little short strokes. So we've got a stroke there, a stroke there, a stroke there, just looking at all those. And it's just going to build itself up over time. So it's not actually going to be difficult. It's just a case of time and building it up with all those very small short strokes. And actually in the sun one, if we look at this, those are even shorter strokes. I think it's perhaps a bigger canvas actually. Um, but And you were just spiralling out. So we're going out with the yellows and then it turns to some creamier colours and then obviously the blue of the sky. And even when it comes to the sky, the sky is still circling around. So very um, counterintuitive really. It's not what we would be thinking of doing. We would be thinking of making a flat sky that goes across this way because that's how we see it. We don't see the blue going in this way. We see clouds circling around, but we don't see the blue of the sky circling around. But that's what he did there. But then again, if you look at it on this side, I'm suspecting this is an earlier one. This is 1888. Whereas let's have a look at this one. Oh, only a year later. So there's only a year between these two paintings. And in the foreground, we've got those very distinctive lines again. And we're having the water, but the sky is quite a, a settled blue. So it's perhaps a difference of the day and the atmosphere and even his mood, perhaps. Um, that we've got this flat blue in the sky there. Okay, so I'll stop piffling on now and I will get on and do this. So I'm going to start with the black and I'll just decide what brush I'm going to use. 
So I've chosen a size 6 round one and this is just a student quality synthetic brush from Winsor & Newton. I don't want to spoil my best watercolour brushes on my ink tents um, so my sable brushes I don't really use with these. So just some nice strokes along the top of the block just as if you were getting them straight out of the pan with your watercolours in a similar fashion. I've got something on there and then here at the base there's a lot more black lines because it's presumably in the shadow from these other bushes that are there so make sure you get those curls in and like I said you don't want to be copying exactly you just want to be getting a feel for those shapes and we're just going to keep building it up and building it up get plenty on your brush although they don't need to be, have to be completely even shapes um, because sorry even colour because if you look at his he's got the other colours showing through a little bit like I say they do merge they do touch each other but they're not blended as such so I just dab a little bit of water on the end of my brush I don't want to have too much water because with too much water you're going to dilute the colour a little bit too much. I don't want diluted colours. You want your colours to be nice and dark. So don't be adding lots of water to your ink tents. So my tree isn't going to end up exactly the same as this. I've just got it off to the side here and I'm just keep glancing across to give me an idea of what we're doing. But I'm not going to worry about it being a replica and studying other people's artworks, looking at how they make the marks, how they work, what the thought processes is, are. It gives you a bit more of an understanding of them as an artist, I suppose. Um, when I see shapes like this, I think of somebody quite fun, although obviously we know that he had his troubles. He's clearly not conventional at his time when he was doing all these lovely curls and shapes. So a lot darker at the base there, it's a lot more green in the centre here so I've left quite a bit of space there. So you can see how those pencil lines helped us just to get the shape of that smallest tree in there and then we'll move on to the larger one. I'm just going to move my tin across so it's out of the way of my hand there. And obviously we need to leave that shape of the ball at the bottom. And ink tents are so good to work with because they're just so immediate. They're really great fun because you can do um, a nice bright little picture in no time at all. You can get all that colour down really, really quickly. So I'm going to carry on now, I won't talk through the whole thing, I'm going to carry on doing this tree. I'll perhaps come back and chat to you when we start on the sun, or when we start, sorry, when we start putting some more colours in as well. So you don't really need to wait for your colours to dry in between, I wouldn't do. Um, because like I say, he has his colours touching each other and they do merge a little bit if you look at them. So don't worry about leaving it to dry and it being perfectly stylized unless that's what you want. So as we come up, he's also understanding how trees grow. So although it's not a convention, no, sorry, although it's not conventional, it is still observing the shapes of the tree and still being true to how things grow, so that all it still looks convincing, even though it's more impressionistic than realistic. So we have a feel that underneath there is the central trunk and that you've got these little bits going off to the side with divisions between them. So separate little clumps, if you like. We'll move on to this dark green now. If you feel you haven't enough colours just with this set, I'm using this set because I know some of you don't have the big full set, but obviously for those of you that have got the full set, um, or a much bigger set than this one, you can use those colours too. But 
if you haven't got just the colours that you want, you can mix them. You know, you can mix your blue and your yellow from your um, ink tents to make some different greens and add a little bit of red to that or whatever. So you can mix your colours you, with the ink tents, get yourself a palette out and mix them just as you would your watercolours. But I just want to use them straight from the pan and use the colours that I've got to just show you what good variety you can get in these ink tents. Now if we look at it there's not much white showing through, obviously his is on canvas and he's got layers upon layers of paint and he's kept working at it and into that paint. Um, so really we don't want too much of the white of the paper showing through afterwards. I'm not going to cover the whole thing, I'm not going to do all the background but with yours you could perhaps do that but it's going to be very very time consuming but it's the kind of thing you could just pick up a little bit every day um, and do an extra bit at it every day just when you've got 10 minutes so you can go over those black lines because all that's going to do is make them darker and more intense so that's fine and that's going to start to cover up some of that white of the paper if we get a bit more green in the base there and he's got some quite vibrant greens in there especially in the center of these trees So don't be tempted to just start painting in your own usual style and filling in the colours. Don't forget we're still doing these little short shapes, little flick of the wrist and keep those curls going. And as you're working along here, this that you've done earlier will be starting to dry and then that makes it easier for us to come on with the next colour and they're not all going to blending together uh, and make a mess but really the ink tents for those of you that have been using it a while you might have noticed if you're familiar with um, if you're more used to should I say using watercolours you will have noticed how they don't um, the ink tents don't make the cauliflowers and bloom shapes that we're used to getting with the um, watercolour it's much, much easier not to make a mess with the ink tents I just wanted to point out to you, can you see that we've got a curl going in here and a curl going this way there. So we're keeping the eye, as a composition, we're keeping the eye within the painting by having these curls this way. If they were that way, you'd be taking the eye out. It makes quite a pleasing composition having the curls going inwards to bring the eye back into the painting. So that's quite a good idea to bookend the ends like that um, with those curls. I'm going to go on to a much brighter green. If you look at his, he's got brighter green in the foreground. I'm guessing by the colours that he's got here um, that it's very much a summer painting. I could be wrong, but it does look very much like summer to me. Everything in full leaf, nice and bright, and a very bright sky. And he has more or less blocked this in, but I'm not going to. I'm going to carry on, it's got a lot of green in these I'm going to carry on working in that way of putting these little lines together so I have quite a bit of pencil under here and it's already disappeared it doesn't really, putting it on that light and then putting this ink tense over the top it really kind of disappears quite quickly you don't have to worry about erasing it too much so you get good coverage with these, especially if you put a few layers on top of each other. This is a mixed media paper, so it's worth, worth knowing. I will link down below in the description the paper that I've used. If you haven't noticed, I've always got in my description a little link to Amazon with all the materials I use in all my work. Um, on here on YouTube if you ever want to find any of the, of the materials but this pad's really handy having a mixed media pad because you can use it for your watercolours and for your ink tents as well 
this is actually quite therapeutic because you don't have to be thinking too much about your um, painting once you've got that shaping that initial shape you're just doing these short lines and actually you're not really thinking too much you're just enjoying the process of putting the colour onto the paper can you see how that white of the paper is disappearing there but we've still got those very distinct curved lines so my greens are altering quite a bit from his he's got quite a lot, a lot more yellow green um, but we can pop some yellow over the top of this obviously and that will just cheer these colours up a bit in a minute when they've started to, to dry you can always just follow the line of some of those black ones with some extra green on top that's just going to make them nice and rich I'll try and leave that bit of white there and leave some I'll put some blue sky perhaps behind there If you look at Van Gogh's strokes, I would say what he's doing is he's, he's looking at what's in front of him and he's just placing that colour and that shape down and not worrying too much about the realism of it. He's just picking out shapes and colours and popping them down and eventually your image emerges when you're working that way. So he's, he's, I do this looking at one colour at a time. So take one colour at a time and see where you can see it in, in your painting and then go on to the next colour and work around your painting and you'll find the whole thing emerges. So what I'm going to do now is turn this over and start working on the sun while that dries a little bit because in a moment once it's dried I'm going to put some of this lovely yellow over the top of it. But I'll start with the yellow I've actually perhaps got a bit too heavy with the pencil there so I'm just going to, excuse me a moment, I'm just going to lighten that pencil line because that won't be so, that might just show through the yellow a bit too much if we're not careful. So I can still see where that is but I've got rid of it a bit. So with a nice clean brush I'll get some of this lovely yellow and of course we could use the orange as well, I think I will do that, we don't have to do exactly what we... Uh, see here see how nicely the yellow goes on top of the other colours especially that green and because these are transparent you've got that layering that you can get and build each colour up keep building and building the colours up and we've almost got rid of all that white on the trees now. So we've got a lot of shape, we've got a lot of movement and interest and character. I mean, I think that's how you could describe his paintings, he's really characterful. He's got all that movement there with these curves. And you can still build up the colours without losing any of that shape because they're showing through those lines underneath. So as I said earlier, what we're really doing is drawing with paint. And that's really what he's doing if you look at uh, his paintings. And that tree is still quite wet in the green there, but like I said earlier, it doesn't matter if they run together. It really doesn't because if we look at his, they're not just all crisp lines. But I think that yellow has really lifted those trees. And we want it to be nice and bright. And again, if you feel like you've lost some of your darks, if you want to be darker with your blacks, you can always go over them again. Just keep working on them. We don't want to be too gloomy. And it does in places outline some of his objects or, you know, parts of the composition so if you look at the little trees at the bottom the little bushes there are lines around them and if there are little bits of white of the paper showing through don't worry too much because he does have little chinks of light coming through those trees I actually think the trees themselves and this bit down here probably don't need much more doing to them but because I've used the orange in the sky I do just want to introduce it down here so not everywhere just in one or two places I'm just going to pop some of this orange in 
and that's that's enough but it's just to balance it because we've got it up there if we look at his sun it's layer upon layer and I think there's some blue, been some blue underneath it to begin with um, and then he's come back on top with more layers of yellow and white obviously we've got white of the paper there but we really shouldn't have that much, that many gaps. So put the orange over the top of, sorry, the yellow over the top of the orange. Keep building it up. As I say with all my tutorials, and I know you've probably heard this a lot if you're a regular to my channel, and that is you will have more time than I have. I, when I'm demonstrating to you and, and teaching, I'm just doing a very quick snapshot, um, trying to give you ideas of things that you might want to have a go at. So I'm not, I'm not doing a full completed painting every time because you know it would just be too time consuming and it would bore you watching it. It's to give you ideas and to give you a starting point. So if you want to go ahead and fill the whole page and get all that blue sky in, keep letting this sun dry and coming back over the top with more of the yellow and the orange, then do that. Um, just keep building it up, building it up. Because he's using oil, I think he's set off with some pale blues underneath and put the others on top. And actually, if you look at his yellow, it's a little bit on the green side, which, which would suggest that's what he's done. And then he's put lots of um, extra white as well in there to lighten it up. So it's very different working in oils. He's got lots and lots of layers. But these ink tents are really good for this, getting this down very very quickly. So this blue colour um, is lovely, really nice bright blue. And if you wanted you could put some of this down in the tree area. It's kind of a, a cypressy tree isn't it and it's and they've often got a tinge of blue in them. So again like I was saying about um, redoing some of those black lines to make them nice and dark and standing out you could add some of the blue to the black because blue on top of black always looks nice. Get a nice intense black that's a bit more interesting than just black on its own. So uh, we could do that. So his sun's a lot more intricate than mine with lots more colours. If you look at it close up, I'll just show you actually. So like I say, it's oil paint, so he's got the blue, I think he's, he's, if we look at it carefully, I think that pale blue is underneath, and then he's put the other colours on top, and he's set off with this yellow blob, and gone out from that, and if you can see, that's slightly green. Um, now, we'd all be horrified if we got green in the sky, but he's not bothered, is he, because he's just enjoying the process and doing it as he goes and looking for those colours, like I said before, and balancing that green there with the greens down here. So... Yeah, we've still got those very distinctive lines, like the ones we're making now, but he's got a lot more colour in there. But we could get, we could achieve that with the ink tents if we just carry on building it up and letting it dry and building up a bit more. So this part's going to take me a while, so I will carry on with it, and I'll come back to you and have a chat a bit later on. Okay, so I'm not going to do any more than that, but you could do, you could make it so there was no white left there. You could just keep building up these short little lines um, and letting those colours merge together. So you'll see here I've put the yellow on top of the blue as we're circling out from the sun, and that gives you the same effect that they got with the oil paints of the green there. So you don't have to do that, but it was just to show you that using the ink tents, you can layer up those colours and mix the colours either wet in wet or wet on dry to get lots more colour than you've got here just with these few. So I did put some of the darker ones on top, this Payne's grey and the purple one here, and it just gives us that feeling that it's, you know, it's perhaps on the edge of dark and it's darker at the top of the painting. 
um, than it is lower down where we've still got the sun and also it balances it a little bit because it's quite heavy visually here with the dark lines behind these um, bushes so it's quite heavy here so we're making it a little bit heavier up there it balances the composition so you'll see that I didn't do the line straight across once I came out from the sun I did some going down here down here curving round and curves over here so keep the curves of the trees and the bushes and the sun in those skylines as well just keep moving and if you wanted to if you weren't just as confident about your drawing you could put those lines in to begin with um, before you start doing your painting so you could put once you've put your sun in you could put a line coming down here and curving around just to give you something to follow with those lines but you can see how much fun this could be I've done that in half an hour or whatever it was it took me to do and if, if you spent two or three hours or like I said if you spent 10 minutes a day on this for a week you could have a really really pleasing uh, quite accomplished painting that you could pop up with some nice sunny colours lots of movement lots of curves lots of colour um, and just fun it's really fun isn't it to do this so make them nice and springy it's spring now put lots of colour in there and use this beautiful yellow it's uh, it's a lovely lovely colour and it's great for getting some light back and some colour back if you feel you've lost it as well in any of your paintings so yeah enjoy the ink tents um, I didn't do anything down here I didn't feel it needed it I think it perhaps wants cropping off there um, you could do that you could put some more kind of I think it's fields that he's got in here is where it's it's obviously midsummer and it's very dry grass so it's very yellow okay so thank you very much for watching let me know what you think in the comments below if you want me to do any more in the style of if you've got the ink tent and you want me to do more with ink tents I can do that as well um, let me know what you think and I'll see you again soon so in the meantime you enjoy your painting and drawing bye bye for now